Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a bit different. I'm going to be doing a tutorial this time. I'm really excited about this because I'm going to be showing you guys one of my most popular designs. It's called a cowgirl and I've already gone ahead and made this one. It's really cute, super popular. However, I feel like I'm going to discontinue this one because I keep seeing it so many times like all over my timeline and um, like everywhere I go I just see it. By no means am I saying that I've made this design like I definitely was inspired but I'm seeing it way too often maybe I'm just hyper aware of it but I'm tired of it so I'm gonna let you guys in on how I create this set so that you guys can do it at home or you know just know how I make it so unfortunately this one is more than likely going to be taken off my website however I'm just gonna give you guys a scoop on how this is made I started buffing out this nail and I'm gonna just show you guys what I'm gonna do so I just take my e-drill because i don't like to hand buff i've been there done that and i'm not doing that ever again just gonna take the e-drill and buff out all of the nails all right so now that all of the nails are buffed out i'm just gonna reshape them a little bit to make them a bit more crisp because you don't want the nails to look like they just came out of the box that she got them from. Really, I like these nails because you don't have to do a whole lot to them. They're pretty much already shaped. You just need to make sure that the tops are kind of like squared off. At least that's how I like them to look because I like them to look crisp. Essentially, all I'm doing is shaping those out and then sticking them onto my nail stands with the putty so that they stay in place. If you look closely, you can see that they have like these weird little like tags. However, they're manufactured. I'm guessing it's like why they have this little plastic thing at the top. So all you have to do is just file that away. Just take your time and get that shape back in line. Then I'm just going to go ahead and stick it to my nail stand. Now that these are all set and nice and buffed and shaped out, I'm going to go in with a base coat. I personally like to use Beetle's nail polish um, because for one, it's affordable and also it just, it does a really good job. I love the colors and really everything about it. So I'm going to go in with that and get a nice layer of base coat on each nail. Don't be shy with the base coat. I feel like I always try to preserve it as much as possible, but at the end of the day, I always end up with way more base coat than I do top coat or any other coat. So I'm just going to go in with a nice layer of base coat and after that i'll put it in the uv lamp and you normally it takes about like 60 seconds to get nice and tacky so that i can go in with my color sometimes i do two rounds of 60 seconds but it really just depends and then as for this um, pinky nail if you can tell it's a bit like slanted and it's because it doesn't fit really nicely like over top of the nail stand like the rest of these shapes do um, because it's so small so i just have it tilted a little bit so now that i have a nice layer of base coat i'm just going to go ahead and put this in my lamp okay so now that that base coat is nice and cured we're going to go in with i have no idea how to pronounce this i think it's modalones or modalones i don't know but this brown color um this is the number color of it and it's just this nice brown um not too dark and not too light it's just right in the middle and then I'm going to go in with a basic white coat from Beatles. I'm not sure if that number is consistent all the time. Sometimes I order from Beatles and it's the same color, but it has a different number. I'm not sure what that's about, but those are the two colors I'm going to be using today. We're going to go in a pattern of brown, three white nails, and then another brown. So I usually go in with two coats per nail, except for the index, which is just the plain white nail. I usually do three coats for that one because I want to make sure it's as opaque as possible and it just gives it a nice bright color compared to the rest of the nails. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm running out low key, but I'm going to go ahead and paint these nails. I usually start off with the brown ones just to get them out of the way because there's nothing special about them. They're just painted brown with a matte top coat. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint those brown ones and put them back in the lamp for 30 seconds. A 
Okay, so something I've noticed about this brand, I'm not sure what it is, but sometimes when I use it, it ends up crinkling. Like I'm, if it does it, I'll show you, but sometimes it ends up crinkling and then it ruins the entire nail. And I'm not sure if it's something that I'm doing, if it's my UV lamp, if I'm not putting it in long enough, I don't know. But if you guys have also had that issue with this brand or any brand, could you let me know please? Cause I feel like I'm going crazy and every time I do this set specifically, it, it almost always happens. So it's really frustrating. And I was just wondering if there's any tips to avoid that. Okay, so this is the first coat. They're looking pretty good, no problems at all. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go with the second coat of this brown and put them back in. And then I'm gonna finish it off with the matte top coat. And I like to do thin layers because again, I feel like with this specific nail polish brand, um, doing a thick coat can kind of encourage that like rippling effect to happen i think that's kind of what i've noticed but again still not quite sure what's causing it or why it happens or if it's just me like i don't know just trying to get that coat nice and even and then once it looks good we're going to put it back in for three more seconds and then i'm going to go ahead and paint this pinky nail it's really hard to keep this in frame like while i'm trying to pay attention to details so I'm going to take that same brand and use their matte top coat and finish off these brown nails. And I'm running out of storage, so I'm just going to do this off camera and show you guys what the finished brown nails look like. Okay, so those have just been cured and they look really nice, nice and smooth. And I just love a matte finish. If there's anything about me, it's that I love a matte finish. I do not care matte or glossy, but more likely I'm going to go with the matte because it's so cute to me. So next we're going to go in and do the white nails and they're pretty simple in terms of getting that coat on. Um, I'm going to speed through the white nail because obviously you just saw me do the brown one and there's no difference. It's just a different color. So I'm just going to show you guys how I go about the white nails. Basically just going in with my white and I'm probably going to have to open another bottle because I am running very low on white. But I'm just going to go in and paint my white nails this nice white. I'm looking for a new white nail polish that's not so opaque and I don't have to do as many um, layers with. So if you guys have any recommendations on a good white, um, please let me know. And a good black too, because I keep having to kind of layer my blacks with other dark colors to get them to be a true black. So if you guys have any recommendations on a good white and a good black, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so I like how this looks. However, I do want to do one more coat of white, just a thin coat of white on the index finger just so I can really get that bright white color. And this is totally optional. It is not necessary. Honestly, do it however you want. And that part of the nail set will be done. Then we only have these two left to do, which is the most exciting part. And boom, matte top coat. So now we have our three matte nails and then we have these two that have not been finished. So now we're going to move on to the cow print design. All you're going to need is a daughter tool. I like to use the bigger end compared to the little end. I usually only used the little end when it came to like very small nails, like a medium square, or like a medium coffin shape. So I like to use the bigger side for bigger nails and then something to put your nail polish on, whether you have a little palette for your polish. And then we're going to take a big dollop of our brown polish and just plop it on there so that we can access it more easily and just put it on there. And we're going to start our design. So essentially what you need to keep in mind is that you don't want to do your um, cow print dollop blob whatever's too thick because when it dries it'll get that ripple effect and it's gonna look very weird and you're gonna have to start over so keep your blobs cow spots as um, even and thin as possible so that you don't have to worry about that when you apply the matte top coat make organic shapes quite honestly I don't even know what cow spots look like on an actual cow but I just know that when I do this design I try to make my dots look as random as possible because the, I just don't think that cow spots are like perfect like they're gonna look different and weird on every single cow so you want to make that kind of like your end goal with your design if you need to you can definitely pull up a picture of a cow and see what their print looks like I definitely recommend that because if you're trying to like mimic it as closely as possible 
then you definitely want a reference photo. I'm just going off of what I think a cow looks like, but yeah, there's no rhyme or rhythm to this at all. Just make random spots. Don't think too hard about it. Make them big enough so that they don't look like little polka dots, but not so huge they look like giraffe spots. Like you want to make it, you know, just make it, make it you, okay? Just make it how you want to do it. I like to add little random spots that aren't as big um, or aren't as round. Don't go overboard, but also don't leave too many white spaces. So now that we have our cow print nails, I'm going to put them in the dryer for about 30 seconds and then put the matte top coat on and show you guys the final product.